Say something that will make my day Cause these memories of her won't go away They're haunting me so I can't sleep She was a pretty little liar who cut me deep So it's been a pretty common debate and a very, very lengthy debate between content creators when it comes to what's better, full frame or APS-C. Which one do you choose? In this video, we're gonna go through which one might actually be beneficial for you and the reasons why you might actually not need to go full frame. So what's going on guys? My name's Jason Morris. Today we're gonna to be talking about full frame versus APS-C. And just before we get started, comment below, what do you guys use? Are you guys full frame? Are you guys APS-C or micro four thirds or anything else? Comment below, what do you guys use? So a lot of people have thought full frame is better and full frame is professional. But what you don't realize is there isn't actually that much difference between full frame and APS-C cameras. Now, Super 35 has actually been used in cinemas for a very, very long time. And those cameras are absolutely incredible when it comes to dynamic range and color and codec and all that kind of good stuff. So when it comes to full frame, it was actually more so when it came to uh, photography with like 35 millimeter film. So yes, there are certain advantages with full frame, but a lot of the time it comes down to the type of camera, the kind of glass that you have on the end of that camera, and obviously the individual skill of the operator. But I guess we can revert back to what the real question actually is. Full frame or APS-C? Do you really need to go full frame? Well, no, you don't really need to go full frame. A lot of people actually think full frame is actually better, but there are actually some instances where APS-C could actually be better as well. There's a whole bunch of factors that you need to consider when actually going full frame. It's almost like investing in a whole completely new camera system. So how about this? Let's put up the A7 III versus the A6400. And let's see if you guys can see the difference. Try and go to a computer monitor or a TV where the resolution is a lot bigger and you can actually see the difference. But if you are on your phone, that's perfectly fine tilt it on a uh, landscape and just try and see the difference. This will be shot in 4K. I will be filming some of this in 4K and I'll also be filming in uh, full HD as well, so 1080. And see if you guys can pick the difference. Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights Searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Falling down, the 
Even if the sky is falling down Even if the sky is falling down The sky is falling down Elia Now did you pick the difference? Could you pick the difference? Comment below, I'd like to know what you guys thought of the footage to see if you could see the difference. Now, let's talk about going full frame and what you actually need to consider when you actually go full frame. Now, with the full frame cameras, your lenses are generally more expensive, but they're generally better in quality. So you do have the G Master lenses with the full frame. They are crazy, crazy expensive. No, I don't have any of those. One of my good friends, he's got those kind of lenses. I don't personally get any value out of the G Master lenses. I don't see too much of a difference in terms of value. They are quality, but for the price, I just, for my kind of work, I don't necessarily need them. Yes, there are some cheaper range lenses, but on a general, the full frame lenses are much more expensive than the APS-C range. But when it comes to Nikon and Canon and all those other manufacturers that have full frame and APS-C, it is still a general trait that full frame lenses are a little bit more expensive when it comes to the APS-C range. So full frame is generally bigger. The cameras uh, have to have a bigger sensor in them, which generally makes them bigger as such. Obviously they've got bigger battery and they've got a whole bunch more features. And when it comes to portability, you know, traveling and stuff, you do have that problem when you've got extra weight. You wanna try and keep that weight down. Uh, you can't really keep the weight down because you've got bigger lenses, you've got bigger cameras, and you're gonna need a bigger gimbal to control that extra weight. So what are the advantages of going full frame then? There are plenty of advantages going full frame. So that is probably why a lot of professionals tend to go full frame. Mainly, let, let's talk about Sony. Sony tend to hold a lot of the professional features in their full frame cameras. They don't wanna put all their top features in your APS-C range because they're gonna cannibalize their full frame cameras or their cinema cameras. And they obviously don't wanna do that. For a business point of view, that's a terrible thing to do. For us consumers, that sucks because we want all the good features, but we're gonna to have to go to full frame to get all those good features. And when it comes to the good features, we're talking about you know added dynamic range, better pixel density, so better for low light, generally a larger lens selection. The APS-C range are actually starting to climb up now though. A lot of third-party companies are starting to produce more quality lenses for the APS-C cameras. Well, after listening to that list, you think, well, why wouldn't I go full frame? Well, like I said, there's a whole bunch to consider. Generally, it's more expensive. So the bodies are more expensive, the lenses are more expensive, the accessories are more expensive because you need more powerful gimbals and stuff. Uh, with the Sony APS-C range, we have the flip screen now, which is you know absolutely incredible. With the A7 III, I've got the camera monitor, so you need to purchase an extra camera monitor. So there's a whole bunch of pros and cons when it comes to the full frame range. You just gotta understand your basic limitations of the APS-C range and why you actually want to change over or at least transition into the full frame range. So in conclusion, you really just need to understand the basic limitations of your APS-C range and what kind of features you might actually need in the full frame as opposed to the APS-C. There isn't actually a whole deal to separate the two cameras at the moment. When it comes to the A6600, that thing is pretty much fully kitted out, but it is very similar price to the A7 III because then you think, okay, well, should I get the A7 III or should I get the A6600? Same thing again, comes down to what lenses and what kind of uh, gear you wanna buy. Are you traveling? Do you like small, compact portability stuff? There are a whole bunch of those factors to consider when you're doing APS-C or full frame. Honestly, you can get professional looking footage with APS-C 110%. It all comes down to your individual skill and abilities. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. That would be absolutely amazing. But make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel as well and hit that bell notification so you can be notified when my next videos come out. Guys, my name's Jason Morris, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Let's get it.
的机构。